pregnancy brings up so many different images. What are you imagining? A baby shower? Maybe the birth of your own children, family. I'm a mother, so those are the things that I am thinking too. But I am also a doctor, an obstetrician. So my images include flashes of hospital rooms, operating rooms, surgical instruments, blood, and the vivid flashbacks to a sheet covering the face of my patient, Angela, who despite all of the modern technology, research, and interventions, we just couldn't save. Flashes of the devastated faces of her partner, her children, wondering how could someone die from being pregnant? People do die from pregnancy-related causes. In fact, this is so important. It's been studied for decades around the world. A measurement tool called the Maternal Mortality Ratio has been created. Think back to sixth grade math. A ratio is a way to compare two terms at different time points or between different locations or groups. Maternal mortality is death related to pregnancy. This becomes a ratio when you compare the number of deaths to the number of live births in the same group. Unlike many ratios, which you would like to see trend up over time, like your pay rate, the maternal mortality ratio you want to see that go down. Down is less deaths. So, as one would hope and expect, after decades of research and medical interventions, the maternal mortality ratio has decreased significantly around the globe. But there is an alarming problem in the United States. Over this same time period, the maternal mortality ratio has more than doubled. So if you, as an American, have a baby now, your risk of death is 100% higher than it was in 1987. A second critical problem is how different maternal mortality is based on factors such as your income, your race, or what I'm going to focus on, the state in which you live. So let me explain by talking about Missouri, not just because you happen to be sitting in Missouri right now, but because as a pregnant person living in this state, your risk of death is twice the national average. It's twice that of surrounding states. It is more than eight times states with the lowest rates. So simply by living in this state, your risk of dying from pregnancy is higher than in 42 other states. This information is terrifying, especially if you are sitting in this audience and are pregnant right now, or if you even plan on becoming a parent one day. This is being urgently addressed. Missouri has formed a committee with over 20 experts from multiple backgrounds, including medicine and public health. They review state-based data and annually publish a report, the Maternal Mortality Committee Report. The second annual published this year was more than 60 pages long. Missouri's work is based on the successful actions of other regions in the country. For example, in California, in the last 15 years, using a similar model, the maternal mortality ratio has decreased by 65% to the lowest in the country. These state-based reports provide the ingredients and the instructions, just like individual recipes for these states to follow. So for a moment, think about your famous family recipe 
for pumpkin bread. You have ingredients, you have instructions. You've tested them over and over again. No matter where you are, that pumpkin bread is the same, and it's delicious. But if you forget a key ingredient, or you complete your steps out of order, your pumpkin bread is flat, salty, completely inedible. Your recipe may be extremely complex with multiple ingredients, time points, and a long list of instructions. But if you follow the recipe, you always succeed. As a physician, I review these reports. I incorporate the key findings into my everyday patient care in both Missouri and Illinois. It was immediately clear to me that the Missouri report lacked a key ingredient, family planning. I was shocked. As a reproductive health specialist for over 17 years, I know what a crucial time this is for Missouri patients, mothers, to make sure that nothing is being ignored. In fact, when you take that new Missouri report and you apply the search terms of contraception, birth control, abortion, or any family planning related search term, there are no hits. Compare this to states that have been successful. Their reports include family planning over and over again. So why is family planning so important? You must first understand that maternal mortality risk is based on three main factors. The number and timing of pregnancies, the presence of other medical conditions, and obstetrical care. When patients have access to family planning measures like birth control and abortion, they can directly control their own number and timing of pregnancies. Patients in collaboration with healthcare providers can plan to optimize outcomes related to their medical conditions and obstetrical care. Did you stop listening when I said the word abortion? Let me be clear, this is not political. It is medicine, it is public health, and it's life and death. So let's go back to my patient, Angela, who I met very close to the end of her life, but I do know some about her medical history. She had a known high-risk pregnancy. She was 40 years old, putting her in a high-risk age category. This was her fifth pregnancy. She had become pregnant shortly after her fourth C-section. Multiple deliveries and short intervals between pregnancies are also higher risk. Angela also had a medical condition, which ultimately led to her death. She had developed an issue between her placenta and her uterus, which caused an uncontrollable hemorrhage. I also know that Angela had planned on her fourth baby being her last. She had decided with her partner to undergo a permanent birth control procedure, a tubal ligation, which ultimately for reasons out of her control was not completed at the time of her delivery. She had a very hard time entering back into care and obtaining adequate birth control. By the time she found out she was pregnant again and able to get in to see a provider, she was immediately diagnosed with this life-threatening placenta condition. I was not there for each of those time points in Angela's life, but I have been for countless other patients. That knowledge in conjunction with research studies helps me answer the question, would Angela be alive today if she had better access to family planning? Data from both domestic and international research show that birth control access decreases maternal mortality. 
What is fascinating, but obvious at the same time, is that this occurs because birth control use prevents more high-risk pregnancies, like Angela's, than it prevents pregnancies overall. So even in countries like the United States, with relatively high birth control use rates, if you are able to continue to fill the many unmet needs for contraception, you can decrease maternal mortality by 30%. So what would that look like for Angela? What if she had been able to prevent that last pregnancy altogether like she had planned? What if she was able to delay that last pregnancy? What if she had known she was pregnant sooner or been able to enter into care earlier? Let's take a simple scenario. Imagine Angela was able to walk into a drugstore and choose a birth control on her own, without a prescription, without waiting for that appointment with the doctor. Like you would walk into the pharmacy and get an Advil over the counter. Also imagine that she was given a 12-month supply of this birth control. She didn't have to return to the pharmacy over and over again for refills. Well, these scenarios are real and they do exist for birth control pills in almost half of the United States today. These would be easy measures for Missouri to implement right now. In fact, earlier this year, Missouri made groundbreaking headway by starting to offer some HIV medications over the counter at the pharmacy without a prescription. In Angela's case, the option to end her pregnancy was never there by the time her medical diagnosis was made. Multiple restrictions on abortion made it impossible for her healthcare team to even offer this potentially life-saving care. Recent data shows a clear relationship between abortion access and pregnancy-related deaths. In the U.S., when states which were identified as restrictive of abortion were grouped together and compared with states which were neutral or protective of abortion, the restrictive states had a significantly higher maternal mortality ratio. So more restrictions, more deaths. I clearly do not know what Angela would have chosen on each of these paths in her own life. But we do know that when patients have access to family planning, they will make decisions over and over again that result in less pregnancy complications and deaths. So I can hypothesize that if Angela, if her family could still have this mother, this partner, if she had lived in a state that had better access to birth control and abortion, based on location alone, Angela's risk of death would have been cut in half if she had lived on the other side of the Mississippi River in Illinois. As you can see, birth control and abortion are two essential ingredients in the recipe of addressing maternal mortality. Missouri, ignoring this, will continue to be our recipe for disaster. The other hard work that is already going into addressing multiple facets of maternal mortality will not be enough in this state. We can all agree that we want those images, those happy, healthy images of families, pregnancies. So in this state, we must immediately turn our focus to measures which improve access to family planning.